Hello, I'm Simran Malecha, a finance geek and a self-proclaimed foodie. And I've been investing in the US stock market for over 10 years now. I've made a lot of money for myself and my clients. And if you're looking to multiply your money, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Today's video is on consumer staple stocks and given the uncertain environment in the US stock market currently, you definitely need to be having at least some of your portfolio into consumer staples. Consumer staples essentially perform well irrespective of the macroeconomic condition. So the first one on my list is everyone's favorite Procter & Gamble. Now we all know what P&G does so I'm not gonna dive deep into telling you what exactly they do. And for those of you who don't know, they essentially own 65 brands and serve 5 billion customers worldwide. Some of their brands include Tide, Downey, Bounty, Tampax, Gillette, Venus, Head & Shoulders, Pantene, Oral-B and Olay. They recently announced their Q4 2024 results on June 30th, 2024 and here are some of their 2024 highlights. Fiscal 24 was another strong year for the company. Execution of the integrated strategy enabled the company to meet or exceed going in guidance ranges for organic sales growth, core EPS growth, cash productivity and cash return to shareholders. Organic sales grew by 4%, the sixth consecutive year of 4% or better organic growth. Pricing contributed 4 points to organic sales growth. The mix was neutral and organic volume was in line with the prior year. Growth was broad based across business units with 8 of 10 product categories growing organic sales. They grew global aggregate value share. 30 of their top 50 category country combinations held or grew share for the year. Core earnings per share was $6.59 up 12% for the year. On a currency neutral basis, core EPS up was 16%. Just for Q4 as well, their organic sales grew 2%, driven by organic volume growth of 2%. Core EPS also grew by 2% and their currency neutral core EPS growth was 6%. This image here identifies the key drivers of their net sales. For FY25, they are estimating organic sales growth of 3-5% to and net sales of 2-4%. to in the past, they have seen positive revenue and EBITDA growth and that just gives me so much confidence that despite the macroeconomic conditions, this stock is only going to grow. Now, when you compare this to the tech and biotech companies that I had suggested earlier, it seems like the growth is too less. But in uncertain times, these are the stocks that will keep growing your portfolio and give you a dividend return as well. Now, the second one on my list is Costco. When I lived in the US, I loved Costco and even now that I don't live there, I order so many things from my family who lives in the US and Costco specifically, it's truly an experience shopping there. They operate membership warehouses and e-commerce websites based on the concept that offering their members low prices on a limited selection of nationally branded and private label products in a wide range of categories will produce high sales volume and rapid inventory turnover. Costco currently operates 878 warehouses including 605 in the United States and Puerto Rico, 108 in Canada, 40 in Mexico, 33 in Japan, 29 in UK, 18 in Korea, 15 in Australia, 14 in Taiwan, 7 in China, 4 in Spain, 2 in France and one each in Iceland, New Zealand and Sweden. Costco also operates e-commerce sites in the US, Canada, UK, Mexico, Korea, Taiwan, Japan and Australia. The company has not yet announced their Q4 FY 2024 results, so I will be analyzing the Q3 results to show you how the company has been doing for the past few quarters. But overall, I know that this company has really strong fundamentals, which is why I have selected it in my list. Net sales for the quarter increased 9.1% to $57.39 billion from $52.6 billion last year. Net sales for the first 36 weeks increased 7% to $171.44 billion from $160.28 billion for the same period last year. Net sales were positively impacted by approximately 0.5 to 1% for the quarter from the shift of the fiscal calendar as a result of the 53rd week last year. 
on 10th july they also reported june sales and announced a quarterly cash dividend which you know i absolutely love they reported net sales of 24.48 billion dollars for the retail month of june the five weeks ended july 7 2024 an increase of 7.4% from 22.78 billion dollars last year the dividend by the way was 1.6 dollars per share which is quite good The company also announced that effective September first, twenty twenty four, it will increase the annual membership fees by five dollars for U.S. and Canada Gold Star individual business and business add-on members. With this increase, all U.S. and Canada Gold Star business and business add-on members will pay an annual fee of sixty-five dollars. Also, effective September first, annual fees for executive members in the U.S. and Canada will increase from one twenty to one thirty dollars. The fees increase will impact around 52 million memberships a little over half of which are executive. Now let's just look at the commentary for May as well. Their total sales was up 6.6% and traffic was up by 6.1%. Their diluted EPS grew 29% and they had a gross margin of 10.84%, 10 bips of growth. Their membership income grew by 7.6 percent, and they had a 90.5 percent worldwide membership renewal rate. They also had a 20.7 percent adjusted e-commerce comparable sales, 32 percent new mobile app downloads, 16 percent growth in site traffic, and increase of 8 percent in average order value. In May, Uber also took on Instacart with expanded Costco membership. and costco members can now receive a reduced annual instacart membership for $79 and costco members who are new to instacart plus can receive two free months of the grocery technology company's membership costco members will save an additional amount on their uber eats orders and get 20% off on annual uber one membership in terms of performance over the years as well it's grown quite a lot in terms of revenue eps ebitda and honestly a store like costco that sells products on deals and discounts will do well throughout the year in any macroeconomic condition now the third one on my list is unilever again it's just like procter and gamble they are one of the world's largest consumer goods companies They are across 190 countries in 4.4 million retail stores and had a turnover of 59.6 billion euros in 2023, with 58% from emerging markets itself. 3.4 billion people use their products daily and have a 75% turnover from their 30 power brands, and they spend 8.6 billion euros on brand and marketing. Some of the brands you may know are Dove, Sunsilk, Vaseline in their beauty and well-being division, Lux and Rexona, Lifebuoy in their personal care segment, and Kif and Comfort in their home care segment. In nutrition, there's Nor and Horlicks, and in ice cream, there's Wall's, Ben and Jerry's, and my favorite, Magnum. In H1 of 2024, they had 4.1 percent underlying sales growth. driven by a third consecutive quarter of volume growth with this half having experienced 2.6% underlying volume growth as well power brands with 75% turnover leading growth with 5.7% underlying sales growth and volume up by 4% turnover increased 2.3% to 31.1 billion euros with a negative 1.1% impact from currency and a negative 0.7% impact from net disposals underlying operating margin was up 250 bips up to 19.6% with a gross margin up 420 bips underlying eps increased 16.3% and diluted eps up by 5.4% They also raised the quarterly dividend by 3%. 1.5 billion euro shares buyback have been commenced. This is obviously positive news and you need to buy the stock ASAP. Their gross margin was 45.7% in H1, 420 bips above previous year and they had a strong profit of 17.1% as well. The drivers of the strong gross margin is volume leverage, positive mix net productivity gains and improved price coverage like you can see from this chart here their volume grew a lot in 2024 while in 2023 their sales was mainly driven by price growth it's significant to note that they are experiencing double digit growth from health and well-being and prestige beauty combined despite a slowdown in the us beauty market 
I will link the presentation below for you and give you a couple number of pages that you should go through if you'd like to see the breakup of their financials and performance for each of the segments. It's laid out very clearly, but it's very, very clear that the entire business is growing at a really good pace. For their 2024 outlook, they are expecting the underlying sales growth for full year 2024 to be within their multi-year range of 3-5% to with majority of growth driven by volume. They also have ESG targets and they are actively working on it which I absolutely love. On climate, their scope 3 emission targets by 2030 were validated by Science Based Target Initiative or the STBI and they are making steady progress towards delivery. On nature, a series of newly agreed regenerative agriculture projects is expected to bring incremental hectareage of 335,000 this year, keeping them on track towards their goal of 1 million hectares. On plastics, working with USAID, they were behind the launch of a new public-private collaboration, the Circle Alliance, to scale solutions for reducing plastic and tackling waste. And on livelihoods, over 20% of their procurement spend now is with suppliers who have signed their living wage pledge, putting them on track to reach 50% by 2026. They made two very important announcements in March, separating their ice cream business and improving their productivity. They are making key changes in their ice cream business with initial focus on North America and Europe to drive sustainably better performance. For the first half, this has led to be better service for customers, better pricing and better competitiveness. Despite that, however, the business still had a little disappointing quarter. And while market factors do help to explain a lot of this, the performance reinforces the importance of continuing to make these operational improvements. Their performance has been seriously affected by shortfalls in China, where they were faced both with tougher market conditions and competitive pressure and shortfalls in Europe as well, where poor weather negatively weighed on the start of the summer season. What I really like is that the company is focusing on innovation like the Purcell Wonder Wash. It's a technology-based detergent for short cycle washes. It's already launched in UK, France and China and is doing really well. Let's look at the financial trend as well since 2020. Overall, it's grown from 2020 to 2022. And I would say it was almost flat growth in 2023. However, the EPS did take a significant hit of 50 cents from 2022 to 2023. This happened because of the growth in Southeast Asia was impacted by a sales decline in Indonesia in the fourth quarter as consumers avoided brands of multinational companies in response to the geopolitical situation in the Middle East. However, this year, the company is expecting to grow 3 to 5 percent in terms of the underlying sales growth and so far, it's looking on track to achieve this. The fourth company on my list is Philip Morris. They own Marlboro and under any macroeconomic situation, one won't stop smoking cigarettes. If anything, if there is a downturn or an uncertain stock market situation, people will only be smoking more. And I know you're probably thinking that, okay, no, the alcohol sales in the US have declined and maybe that will impact Philip Morris's sales as well and that I'm probably talking rubbish. But I don't think that the whole GLP-1 story plays around smoking. If you don't know what that is, so essentially with the popularity and the rise of the GLP-1 drugs, the alcohol sales have reduced because these drugs suppress the rewarding effects of alcohol and have reduced the alcohol consumption. Anyway, this is not happening with smoking and the sales are only going to continue. They announced their results on June 30th, 2024 and their current product portfolio primarily consists of cigarettes and smoke-free products including heated tobacco, e-vapor and oral smokeless products. It was interesting to note that 38% of their total net revenue came from smoke-free products. They've experienced a continuous volume growth driven by smoke-free products despite supply constraints and EU flavor ban. The smoke-free acceleration is also driving excellent OI growth. They have over 36 million users of PMI smoke-free products. They honestly have impressive results across all metrics. They raised their 2024 growth outlook given their strong fundamentals. I also just want to talk a bit about their revenue and earnings trends since 2020. You can see here that revenue has grown year on year and so has EPS. There are no highs or lows or surprises in the business like this. This is why we're investing in consumer staples when the economy seems a little shaky and uncertain. 
the EPS did fall from 2022 to 2023 due to an increase in interest expense. However, their normalized EBITDA grew from $13.5 million to $14 million. All these are positive signs and all these companies are going to give you stable return in terms of either dividend, share repurchases or a price increase. Especially when the stock market is so uncertain right now and all the tech stocks are falling. If you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to read the description below for some more insights on these stocks. Bye!